everybody, I'm Darren and I'm a philosophy teacher. This is the first in a series of videos on philosophical thought experiments. This first one is going to be about Friedrich Nietzsche and the eternal recurrence. Now there's something to say about thought experiments before we get going. Some people find them infuriating because the scenarios are just so absurd and people would say, what? That never happened. But I want you to bear with me just for a few moments because the purpose of them isn't really in the details, but in the general focus, the way in which it tries to get us thinking about particular ideas with specific parameters. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Nietzsche and then talk about the eternal recurrence. Friedrich Nietzsche was born in 1844 and died in 1900, though he was considered insane for the last 11 years of his life. His father was a Lutheran minister, which obviously means that he was brought up in a very religious background. But his father died when Nietzsche was still very young, a very unpleasant degenerative disease of the mind. And this caused within Nietzsche a crisis of faith. He couldn't believe that an all good God would so brutally destroy his father's mind and ultimately have him die. So as a result of this, Nietzsche turned against Christianity. He had a severe crisis of faith. And this not only upset him as a child, but infused the whole of his work from then on. In perhaps his two most famous books, Beyond Good and Evil and The Genealogy of Morality, he disassembles the whole of the Judeo-Christian religions. He points out that the duty-based doctrine is um, oppressive, prevents us from living full and rich lives, and instead, in his very life-affirming philosophy, he suggests to us that we ought to cast those Christian ideals aside and rather infuse ourselves with our own morality and create our own life-affirming view. He produced most of his best work after a brief sojourn at teaching at the University of Basel. So intellectually precocious was Nietzsche that he was appointed as professor of philology at the university while still in his early 20s, before he'd even completed his PhD. But partly because of his poor eyesight and also because of severe headaches, he received a pension uh, from the University of Basel just a few years after having started teaching there, which allowed him to essentially retire to the Swiss Alps where he walked and created the remainder of his vast, terrifying and thought-provoking oeuvre. So what we'll do now then is go straight to the thought experiment, the eternal recurrence. The eternal recurrence. What if some day or night a demon were to steal after your loneliest loneliness and say to you, this life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live it once more and innumerable times more and there will be nothing new in it. But every pain and every joy and every thought and sigh and everything unutterably small or great in your life will have to return to you all in the same succession and sequence. Even this spider and this moonlight between the trees, and even this moment and I myself. The eternal hourglass of existence is turned upside down again and again, and you with it, speck of dust. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or have you once experienced a tremendous moment when you would have answered him, you are a god, and never have I heard anything more divine?
So what does this thought experiment mean? One thing we need to do is backtrack ever so slightly to perhaps Nietzsche's most famous quotation, which is God is dead. In his book, The Gay Science, or The Joyous Science, depending on the translation, this line is immediately followed with, and we have killed him. So this is a concern for Nietzsche. Nietzsche isn't trying to destroy uh, God. What he's rather concerned about is the industrial capitalist society that he finds himself living in. What he's concerned about is the God-shaped hole left by an increasingly secular society. And he's concerned about how we choose to live a good life in the absence of Christian morality. Now, also in terms of meaning, it's useful to bear in mind that every ethical system has metaphysical foundations. So, though some of us may not be too willing to accept the whole fantastic idea of the eternal recurrence, that's slightly secondary to the purpose of the thought experiment. The purpose of the thought experiment is to set parameters to get us to think about an ethical problem, which is, how do we live our lives in the absence of God? If that explains some of the meaning of the thought experiment, we're then led to the value. And the value of the experiment is much more interesting, I think, than just interpreting the experiment itself. Its value lies in the fact that it wants us to stop and examine our lives. At no other opportunity would we do this unless this great evil demon, of which there are many in philosophy, comes down and asks us to stop and evaluate our lives. Because if we're encouraged to do that, all of us, myself included, are likely to look back and say, oh my goodness, actually, there are things I did that I'm ashamed of. There are things that I would have liked to have done differently, and that's fine. Nietzsche doesn't want us to infuse ourselves with guilt or chastise ourselves. That's the very thing that he's trying to get away from by moving away from Christianity. All he wants us to do is to take the time to reflect and in so doing, recognize that we have an opportunity now, in this moment, to reevaluate our lives and whatever things we'd like to do differently, whichever other life choices we'd like to make, or if we'd like to live ourselves differently or be different people, that is what he wants us to do. He's telling us, using one of his own aphorisms, to become who we are. If you've enjoyed this short film and would like to find out more about philosophy, then please click the subscribe button below. You can also look at my website, darrenharper.net, where there's a range of online, residential and day courses. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a thought-provoking day.